All right, lads, welcome back to me podcast, Cheaper Than Therapy. Mick Thomas here. How are you? Thanks for liking, subscribing, sharing, and coming on back. I do appreciate it. Get this podcast wherever you get your podcast from, all the usual Podbean and Spotify and Apple and all of the good stuff. And on YouTube, if you want to go check me out and look at my handsome mug today, available on YouTube. Check it out. Uh, episode 244, we are moving along. Listen, let me get some live dates going on for you. Uh, February 28th, 29th, Uncle Vinny's on the Jersey Shore in New Jersey, Point Pleasant. Cannot wait to get down there. Tickets are flying off the shelf. Uh, March is a busy one, right? March is a busy one. March 7th, I'm in Columbus, Ohio at the Funny Bone with my buddy Sean Finnerty. March 13th. March 13th, I am going to be in Mulcahy's on Long Island. Mulcahy's on Long Island again. The 14th, I am at Laugh Boston, Boston Comedy Club, Great Comedy Club. The 15th, I am at uh, the MGM in Springfield, Massachusetts. 17th, I am on St. Patrick's Day, the big old Irish day. I am in... Uh, where am I? The comic strip live for an all Irish comedy show. I'm bringing in some of the some some funny acts from Ireland. It is going to be a blast. So get your tickets uh, wherever you get your tickets from. Visit those locations, and the tickets will be available right there. Didn't have an episode last week. Uh, again, I'm not I'm not sorry anymore. I used to kind of feel bad if I didn't get an episode up, but again, it's free, isn't it? It's a free show. Well, you can't get mad at that, right? It's like sunshine. You can't get mad when the clouds come up on a beach day. You don't pay for the sun. So you don't pay for my pleasure of this. Although I did mention last week, if you want to Venmo me, uh, Thomas make 322 That was funny. Some of you did actually Venmo me like a few cents here and there. So boy, was the egg on my face. I found it funny. I found it very, very funny. I laughed. I did laugh. So I uh, I do I do appreciate it. Um yeah, I don't know what my last week's episode was about. I, 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 because I, again, I didn't get an episode up, so I had some topics to talk about, which I won't do now because they're kind of outdated and stuff like that. But spent spent the night in the hospital. Uh, not going into details. All is fine. All is well. Um, pretty well till five in the morning. Basically, this is like the four or five in the morning. Basically, the whole night of of uh, the whole night of in hospital. Right as we go into the morning, but um. Yeah, it's not fun, man. I don't know if you've ever been in a hospital. Here's what I know about being in a hospital, too. Like, you, I think it's, I, I like to go to places and see what can I fake in here? How much fakingness can I do? What faking can I get it going on? And I figured if you gave me a pair of scrubs, a pair of sneakers, I could act like I fit in there for a long time. Because if you look around, they're doing nothing. Like they're doing, and I'm again, this is nothing against you, doctors and nurses. I ain't taking away from the actual work you do do. But when you're in an ER, right, and you're just kind of lying on a gurney in the middle of the hallway, why, why are you pushing? Like, why are you pushing around? Like people are just walking by, pushing things. I feel like I could just sneak into because nobody's talking to the people pushing things, and I feel like if I snuck into a hospital, I could just push this thing along and just, uh, you know, fit in. Fit in, no problem at all. Nobody like who's that guy? That's the pushing guy. He's pushing the thing around. Looks normal. Look like he looks like he belongs here, don't he? And uh, until someone called me, right? Then like, hey, you pushy guy. I go, yeah. What's going on? We, another heart transplant. Can you come over and do it again? Oh, heart transplant, is it? Yeah, you're the pushy guy. The pushy guy always does the heart transplants here. And then I'd be like, oh sure, yeah, let's go in. Get it, let's get it all suited up. And I go in and I just stand over the hearts. And I go, oh, it is. Ah, these are not the hearts I normally work with. These are totally different than the ones I'm used to. That's how I get out of it. That's what I would do. You'd be like, "Ah, oh, this guy, we thought he didn't know anything about, about that, but now he does. Oh, noodles, noodles. Yeah, I'd be like, I wish I could, but these are the different hearts. I work on the elongated ones. And uh, yeah, but I, I that's, that's how, I would, how I would get out of it. But again, all is fine. All is well. A busy week, right? I had a busy, busy week. What a what a week. I want to talk about what a week I had. Um you know, I, I, I had seven shows, right? And I, that's not uncommon for me to have a lot of shows in a week, but I had seven amazing sold out shows. Right? Seven amazing sold out shows this week. And then one television appearance. And I'll get into that in a minute. Um but I was at the comic strip for four shows. It was at the Comedy Cellar, West Side Comedy Club. Comedy Cellar, comic strip for five shows. Uh, the Comedy Cellar, West Side Comedy Club. 
you know what, man? I was just I was so lucky. I just felt lucky and blessed to be doing the job I do. It was fucking great. Let me adjust this camera, by the way. It looks better. My head's too low on it. There you go. That's better. Um, yeah, it was just a great time. Just, a, you know, running around, going from one club, getting in the car, going across town, getting up another show, back in the car, heading back again. Hustle and bustle of it all. Had a great time. Had a great time. And then I... Uh, I was on Fox News right now. The funny thing about this is Jimmy Fallon has a show, Fox News Saturday night. Uh, and I know Jimmy for years and years. Me and Jimmy go way back. We started, no, not saying we started together. Jimmy was in comedy a lot longer than me. But we would do shows together. We would do like firehouse shows in Delaware and, you know, stuff like that. We would kind of go through the dreads together. And Jimmy's got this show on Fox now. Very successful. It's on Fox News, Fox News Saturday night. It's very successful. I, I might put the link up somewhere. I got the link around and uh you know popular show and jimmy just reached out hey mick you want to come on on come on be the show be nice to see you nice to hang out with you and we went we went on the show and it was my first kind of show doing like that my first real panel show and i had a lot of fun man i had a lot of fun it was a blast um you know to be part of that to to see what goes on behind the scenes and it's not it's never what you think it is right so i go in and go to the green room Got hung out with Carly from Fox News. I don't remember Carly's last name. From uh, Fox and Friends, right? Sweet lady, sweet sweet lady, right? And then uh, I was on there with Aaron Berg, fellow comedian Aaron Berg. I know Aaron for years. Aaron's a great lad. And uh, who's the? Other? There was a country singer, um, Taylor Austin Die, and she was cool. Met her and her husband. They they were they were cool. And I'll, again, I'll post the link up for you to watch the episode but what i know is about a lot of things about television they do edit out a lot of stuff so but i'm going too fast so the funny thing is was like when i when i posted online that i was going to be hey i'm going to be on fox news blah 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 and there was a lot of uh, first of all a thousand people disappeared right poof disappeared immediately unfollowed me like like we liked you this whole time we liked your jokes we like your little videos we like your podcast everything you've done but the second you've decided to set foot into a building that i don't like then you were we can no longer be together on any platform i no longer want to see yours it's weird isn't it like i i don't go on i don't go on our target i boycott target um and for not the reasons you think right i don't i don't i w if i were to ever drink and i don't really drink that often i would have a bud light every now and then i still probably would have a bud light. i don't boycott bud light right i'm not i'm not a boycotter really but i did boycott target based on a lot of the shit that goes on with target uh because i got kids i got children and i don't agree with how they handle stuff that they try to to put in children's section and that kind of stuff um that's my personal belief but hey man you do you as the kids are saying so I, I i like a good boycott every once in a while but it's amazing that we like everything you did but the fact that you took a step on to there you, you know what i mean like like what if you what if let's pick a store let's pick a, a store like stop and shop right a stop and shop and uh right they were i don't know it was and this is not true you know what? let me change the name because i don't want pe this algorithm picking up stuff and then send it to the stop and shop and then i get taken down but let's say we have a supermarket called like i don't know like nazi nazi groceries right nazi groceries and then you find out that like they sell coca-cola right you're not gonna go i'm not drinking coca-cola anymore because they're trying to sell it in there that's their product this is mcthomas product i, I went to fox but I, I don't mind fox i don't give a shit for all those people those hypocrites out there who like and then some people who are friends of mine go like make great congratulations but i would never willingly watch fox like ugh, okay okay so when i say that to him i'm like i bet you're wrong i bet you're full of shit because i could probably list that 110 movies that are from fox the same umbrella that you have watched gladly watch let it be from fucking x-men to whatever fucking movie ryan gosling was in right and i guarantee you you never sat down and went oh fox i'm not watching this movie i bet it's not one person who's that dedicated to their own moral compass you fucking hypocrites but whatever man you do you again as they're saying but the funny thing about television was they uh there was some stuff that was cut out which i kind of had so on a show so some of the things that were cut out, well, the first thing to cut out was um, I was sitting next to Carly. Carly is a typical Fox News lady, right? Gorgeous to look at, uh, blonde hair, perfect posture. I didn't. I looked like a fucking question mark. Uh, I looked like the third guy on the evolution poster. Like, that's where my posture was. 
and just a she was a nice fun girl as most like republican women are just fun they're fun they're just fun right they're not worried about global warming so they're on jet skis they're on fucking four by four they're in trucks they're shooting guns they do the fun things right they're not like the fucking purple fat haired people you know what I mean? Just complaining all the time. So I'm next to her. So here's what I got. So she just had a baby. God bless her. She just had a baby. Baby six months six months ago. And then so Jimmy said that. I introduced her as she just had a baby six months ago. And I turned to the camera and I went, six months? You see that, women of America? Six months. What's your excuse? Got taken down. Didn't, didn't even edit that. They didn't even air that part. I was like, okay, fair enough. Get it. Good for you, Fox, for having standards. Right? And then, but then... Who do you call it was on there? Uh, Kevin O'Leary. They call him Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank. If you're listening from another country, it's called the Dragon's Den in like in Ireland and England and stuff like that in the UK and Australia and Canada. And they don't have Shark Tank. I mean, they might show it, but they, they call it the Dragon's Den. Same show, same concept. These guys invented it, I believe. And uh, so they have, he go, he comes out and, and, and Mr. Wonderful, like I said, his name was, but he, he's just sitting there and he, he's just very serious. He's this big, by the way, right? For those of you wondering, this powerful man that has like millions and millions of dollars. He's this big, right? Lovely little fella. So we come on, we do our segment and then and then we go to commercial, which is not real commercial because it's it's a break. It's, it's not a live show. And uh, he walks in, right? He walks in. Too much makeup, if I'm being honest with you. I don't know what you're covering up, mate. Like I had to put up a lot of makeup on myself to look white. You know what I mean? I, I I had so much makeup on just so I would look white on camera. So he comes comes in, little fella, and he. he but here's here's the thing, right? That they don't want me to talk about. And maybe I shouldn't talk about because I might be burning me bridges with Fox. But um, we all had to slide down one. So if you watch the show, you'll see you come back after commercial. Oh, Mick is down further. Carly moved down next, and then Aaron moved down. So he got in. Kevin got in. But while while we were moving down, someone. Pst, 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 Heightened up the chair a little bit for him. Little fella, whatever. Who am I going to, what am I going to say, right? Well, you know, you, it's the height God gave him. Height God gave him. But a bit of a Napoleon complex is my point. So um, he's he's there, right? And he's got two watches on, right? And he's sitting there. And he's got two watches on, one on each hand, left and right hand. And he's got matching rings. He's got a wedding ring. And he's got one on the other finger. So it's hard to get a word in edgeways with Jimmy because it's his show, right? And as a comic, you don't want to step on another comic's. Like, he's setting... You, you have an ear for comedy, you know. He's got a joke punch on coming up. And he's so fast that you can't really get a word in. You know, remember, like, I, I always tell the story about when John Stewart was on... Um, John Stewart was on... Uh, Colbert right and he was kind of shitting on the vaccine and he was shitting on the Wuhan lab and that kind of stuff and John John Stewart is a liberal very very left-leaning liberal I love John Stewart and uh Colbert just didn't like the fact that he was shitting on it because Colbert is all in with the jab he's all in with the jab all in with the Pfizer with the Fauci he's all Colbert's so bought and sold and uh he wouldn't let John... And I, I let him go. He's a comic. Let him rant, man. That's where the gold is found. Like, what are you doing? And he just wouldn't let... It, so we have a good understanding to watch Jimmy go. We're like, I'm not going to cut him off. This is his show. There's a punchline coming up. Let him go. So there was a moment like where Jimmy said, ba 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 boo ba boo He asked a question. Mr. Wonderful. Kevin la answered the question. In comes a punchline. Bang, everyone laughed. Here's me moment. I jump in. I go, all right, mate. I go, what's the story with the two watches there? And he just didn't look at me, didn't look down the panel where I was down here. He looks down at these two wrists and he goes, one for New York time and the other one for Abu Dhabi time. And I go, I only got one watch, mate, and it's set to New York time because I live here. Uh, I said, but if I want to know what time it is in Ireland, I'll just do simple math. I guess millionaires, multimillionaires are not good at doing that, right? And everyone laughed but him. And then I go... What's up with the other ring there? Is that for your Abu Dhabi wife? Everyone laughs. Ha, ha, ha. Carly gives me a playful. Oh, you. And uh, he didn't laugh at that one either, right? And, um, but I didn't know this, right? I didn't know. You know, when you kind of, you, you find out something later, it happens. Like, I didn't know this, that his wife had killed someone in a in a boating accident. Um, I don't know, maybe her yacht ran over some. Mexicans in a canoe trying to get here or you know some from Cuba coming over on a floating door maybe she ran over him in a yacht I don't know the story I don't I didn't even google it but I found out that she she killed somebody with her with her boat 
Uh, I mean, if it happens at sea, right, it's not really murder because you can do what you want to see. Is that right? Someone check that out for me. I don't know. International waters and that stuff. If anybody wants to send that back to me. But he, uh, I, got, I got up and I, everyone's like, ha, 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 laugh, laugh. He gets up. All right. Thanks so much. Good night, everybody. And he walked off and uh, he whispered something to the producer. And then that did not air. <laughs> that part did not air at all. But uh, maybe I burned my bridges with Fox. I don't know. This guy's got enough money to have me killed. I am watching. My head's on a swivel right now. Everywhere I go, a comedy club. If I see a red light on, you know, like a, a light on someone's phone, I'm nervous. Is that a sniper trying to take me out? Because I went after Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful. We'll never know. We'll never know. But if you read about it in the news, comedian shot by an unknown person. Kevin O'Leary's men did it. Check there first. Check there first. But here we are. It's, it's, it's President's Day, right? Happy President's Day, everybody. Happy President to our Commander-in-Chief, the man that rules us all, Joe Biden. Listen, how does Joe... Did you see the video? I, I Again, I wish I... I wish... One day maybe I'll expand the show and I'll go, all right, let's cut to this clip right now and the video will be playing and we'll be talking about it. I wish I knew all that stuff. If anybody's a technical person and wants to kind of help me with that, with the production of the show, but I like to keep it simple. Again, I don't get fucking paid for it. I turn down advertising money so I can just get straight to the point so you cunts can just listen and go, thanks for the show, Mick. I did, you know, what do you like about it? You know, it's funny when you go on that, when I get reviewed all over the thing about what you like about the show, some people don't like it, but when you get reviewed, they go, I like that he has got no commercials he doesn't break away the commercial he doesn't try to sell us anything help a brother out he said on black history month you know what i mean throw the venmo thomas mc322 throw me some bucks maybe i'll get some production value but if you are in the production business and you know about it maybe go make it's very simple you got to just add this click and drag on as a video but anyway back to mr biden on black history month what does joe do what does any politician do i don't want to make this about joe biden because we all know how much i don't like politicians no matter who they are um, it's it's an election year now, right? So now the now the pandering really starts, right? Now the pandering really starts. So you know what I mean? Like, oh, I want to have an abortion. Well, we'll get you your abor- we we'll get your abortion, man. We we get we get abortions for everybody, you know. Um. We'll do all that, right? So then it's Black History Month, and of course, all the president wants. What does he do? He goes to have dinner with a family. A family. But who does he go see? He goes visit a black family on Black History Month. Watch the video yourself, right? It's fucking mind blown. But old Joe doesn't turn up empty handed. No, he do- of course not. He's the president. He's got so much money because he's given billions of it to the Ukraine. So we know he's fucking minted. We know he's minted. So what does what does good old Uncle Joe? What does good old Uncle Joe bring to the black family? It's dinner time. He brings them food. What does he bring them? Does he bring sushi? No, he doesn't bring sushi. Doesn't bring sushi. Does he bring gourmet salmon? No, he doesn't. Outback Steakhouse? Maybe? You would think he brings to the black family fried chicken. Fried chicken. And what does he say when he comes in? Again, I'm not making it up, lads. I'm not making it up. So don't go on a chip. I'll make you very biased. He goes on. I, I, the video came out just today. It came out just today. This is the fucking hot take on it. Probably before anybody else gets to it. He goes to the family. Hi, I got you guys fried chicken, but I got myself a hamburger. Yeah, you get black people, Joe. You get, and then the best part, my favorite, personal favorite part of the video, it's not that, right? It's not that one part. It's not that moment. It's like when you look at wrestling, if you watch WWE, when people, when Mick Foley fought The Undertaker and he got thrown off the cell. People talk about that match. He got thrown off the 20-foot cell through a table, right? But the real fans love the choke slam through the middle of the cage, right? I'm like that. You would think the grand slam was the fried chicken, but it's not. Here comes the biggest part for me is when the black kid was telling him, yeah, I want to go to business school. And Joe goes, what? You mean you don't want to... Go to the MBA? I'm confused. What? You mean you don't want to be a rapper? Huh. That's confusing times. You want to be a bit... Look it up yourself. Look it up yourself. It's Again, look it. It was a crazy week for politicians. You got that fucking idiot pandering in the worst way to black people. And, and this is why the approval rating is down from black people, Hispanic people with Joe Biden. It's 100% down. You can't just say it's not because it is. Because of shit like this. Because of shit like this. Like, And it goes for anybody. Even, though, even like... Even if someone's not Biden, they've all, they all do it. They all try to pander to the group they're talking about. Just fucking be yourself. Just be your fucking self. You know what I mean? And if that's enough to sell yourself, then do that. Don't fucking show up, you stereotypical. And at this stage, man, 
It's not against Joe Biden. I promise you right now, like if it, I, I can truly say I feel bad for the man. I'm not, no joke coming, no insult coming. It's not a backhanded fucking compliment. I genuinely feel bad for the man because at this stage, he's just an old guy out there fucking dancing. The, you know, when you go to a wedding and there's an old guy up, like, and they go, oh, look at grandpa's dancing. Look at grandpa's dancing. He's great. And then he wants to sit down and rest. Let him sit down and rest. Stop pushing him back up. Come on, Grandpa, one more song. You're going to love this one from Usher. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, let him sit. Let the man sit down, please. For the love of God, let him sit down. And then you got Trump brought out. I don't know if he brought him out. I don't know the story, but there's sneakers out now. They have Trump sneakers out. Who's buying the Trump? Are you buying, would you buy Trump sneakers? When you still look at them? I mean, I'm not a sneaker person. My buddy, my buddy Paul Verzi is a sneaker person. He collects them. I don't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Like, it's got a big... They're all gold and they got a T and they look tacky as fuck. But again, I'm not in a sneaker game. Maybe that's... That's the fucking shit, man. Again, I'm not in that sneaker world. Maybe it's... I don't, but what... You know what I mean? Like, is he going to advertise them? Is Trump going to be... I got new sneakers. You're going to love these sneakers. I had them designed by the Chinese kid from Goonies. And at the back, it comes out on the oil when you're being chased. All the oil comes out from the back of the sneakers. You're going to love them. And then we're going to have ones from Mexico. We got new ones coming out from Mexicans, and they got no soles. So when the Mexicans try to climb the wall, they're going to slip. They're the best sneakers ever. And then on the front of them, they've got those spring that come out with a punch and fist on it. You're going to love these sneakers. Michael Jordan would wear these sneakers, absolutely. If he was still playing basketball, he would wear these sneakers. What are we doing, lads? What are we doing? Can presidents just be fucking presidents? Remember that? Their mind was only on fixing the shit. Remember that? Gas fucking so high. Oh, it came down a little bit. Don't fucking brag about it, mate. Don't think 301 is a fucking great number. Well, at least it's not 375. It's not, but it still shouldn't be 301. Stop acting like something great was done. People like, oh, the jobs are going up. Yes, the jobs are going up. Why? Because some people like us have to take two or three jobs to fucking pay for shit. And then they're in the economy. The economy's great with fucking everybody. Everybody's got a job now. Every, all the jobs went up. Yeah, Joe, raising the price of everything. And they even have to get in two or three jobs to pay for them. Ain't a fucking thing to be bragging about, mate. Stop going to people's houses with fried chicken. Stop bringing out fucking sneakers. Can we just get... Listen, and again, we all know my, my stance on politicians. I don't like them. I don't trust them. They're all grimy. They're all slimy. Donald Trump does have my endorsement, though. He does have my endorsement. I will do a serious episode about why I would vote for him. And, I'll, and you're going to be shocked why I would do it. But my main reason is because I want to watch, like, sensitive people cry. It's the only reason I want to see him in. I, I just want to see him walk onto a platform... Right, when he comes down, when he gets elected in, and just like that woman screaming, you've seen that video with the black and green sweater or jacket, and just no, nah! like that makes me happy because you know why it makes me happy because you've chosen to be that upset, you've chosen to be that annoyed, and that's why Donald Trump has my vote. You heard it here first, cheaper than therapy. Mick Thomas endorses Donald Trump just because he makes sensitive people cry. Is it because of his policies? Nope. Is it because of his personality? Not at all. What about his tweets? Couldn't give a fuck. Why are you voting for him? I'm voting for Donald Trump because he makes sensitive people cry. Because that's how we get stronger. That's how we get stronger, right? As a, as a nation. But anyway, that's the episode. I have to go now. It's cold. I have to release this episode. It's Monday night. I'm hungry. Uh, it's Lent. So I am fasting. I fast every single day for 24 hours. I reduce myself down to one meal. Uh, for, for, for Lent. Jesus went out to the desert 40 days, 40 nights and went without food all that Lent of time. I will give up all my meals except one a day. That's that's what I'm going to do. So I'll be fasting for 24 hours. So I'm kind of getting delirious. I'm seeing spots right now. So uh, anyway, I got to go. Thanks for, listen, come see me live. I just posted earlier all the dates. Come see me. I would love to see you. And uh, as always, wash your hands, you dirty fuckers. Good luck to you. Good luck to you.